So I leave the literature for you on this. Now, a patient in the ward has got a lightheadedness and palpitations and uh, pulselessness is there and his ECG is shown what is this? Simplest question on the planet. If you don't recognize this is ventricular fibrillation and uh, thinking it is some atrial fibrillation, then uh, only God should save. Huh? I mean, save the patient. So, it is ventricular fibrillation. Then, doctor, valvular heart disease, chest radiograph is presented to you. What you see is straightening of the left heart border, which occurs whenever pulmonary hypertension develops. Pulmonary hypertension is a feature of which valvular heart disease? Mitral stenosis. Why mitral stenosis? Once more, whiteboard. Otherwise, uh, sir, how we will know pulmonary hypertension is mitral stenosis? Come on, come on, quickly give the board. Tablet, see, doctor, all these things we have discussed and put it on reader library. I want uh, you to, if you can read faster, read. If you are unable to read faster, review the video and read. Right? A, any video of any topic will take not more than 20-25 minutes. Some topics you will be naturally very good because in MBBS also your professor might have taught or you might have seen patients. Such topics you need not listen video in the video library because already you are good naturally. But some topics, glomerular nephritis, etc. You will have some sort of resistance to read. So, such things now are available on uh, online video library at anatomy to medicine.com. You read it, you listen it, you read it. If chance is there, you see the patient. At least for entrance, you may not get time. Right? So, that is how you need to see doctor. It's simple. You have mitral valve, left atrium, left ventricle. You have a mitral stenosis. What is draining into left atrium? Pulmonary vein. That is uh, drained by what? Pulmonary capillaries. What is draining into that pulmonary artery? From where is it coming from? Pulmonary artery from right ventricle. Any mitral stenosis will lead to back pressure in the pulmonary vein, pulmonary capillaries and ultimately in pulmonary artery and lead to pulmonary hypertension. So, if there is a pulmonary hypertension, how will you be able to recognize? Very good. Ramya has correctly answered it as mitral stenosis. Straightening of the left heart border. Why straightening? Because in the hilum, you will have pulmonary vessels. If the pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary artery enlarges, that will fill that concavity which normally exists in the hilum. Normally, there is a concavity that is filled by this enlarged pulmonary artery. So, that the entire left heart border will become like a straight border. That is mitral stenosis. So, mitral stenosis what are the other features of mitral stenosis is the question. So, you have a right ventricular heave malar flush, tapping apex beat, but uh, pan-systolic murmur radiating to axilla is a feature of what? MR, mitral regurgitation. Mid-diastolic murmur is a feature of mitral stenosis. How many didn't understand? Will there be access here? Okay, Panna, Valar heart disease. Half an hour may up expert cardiologist Banjaiga. Huh? So, otherwise, uh, uh, if you keep uh, always, if you postpone, then uh, time will not come. Every month we reach in January, it is like Taram pregnancy coming closer. Time to stop smoking, drinking and all teratogenic drug taking and uh, do little yoga and go ahead for labor. So, you have to be ready next 3-4 months. I will read next week, next week. Do not go into that postponement. Okay? Anyway, I cannot uh, now once more start about uh, MDM and uh, PSM at this point. PSM is pan-systolic murmur and mid-diastolic rumble. 
all that is there in the video. 72 year old palpitations, ECG is shown, is not acutely distressed and uh, uh, what would you prefer as a first line therapy? Uh, it is his first episode of this kind and he noticed this about 3 hours before coming to hospital and his ECG is shown. What do you see on this ECG? Saw tooth like pattern, atrial fibrillation doctor, eh? atrial fibrillation. So, when your atrial fibrillation is there, do you want to do cardioversion or not? Do you want to give antithrombotic and then do cardioversion? They are all criteria for that. So, in this given case, uh, what do you want to basically do? So, uh, of all this, it is the cardioversion because it is only 3 hours duration, recent in onset, first episode of AF. You can revert it into sinus rhythm very much. 50 year old, no past medical history. Dry cough, shortness of breath, and uh, ESR is elevated, and angiotensin converting enzyme is elevated. Bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy is there. On telephone only, you can diagnose, doctor, sarcoidosis. How does sarcoidosis differ from that of tuberculosis if you do the biopsy? Non caseating granuloma is a feature of sarcoid. Caseating granuloma is a feature of TB. Both TB and sarcoid is capable of causing hilar lymphadenopathy is what you have to basically remember. That is right. Now, a patient has become acutely short of breath, type 1 respiratory failure and his radiograph has been shown to you. What do you see? A triangular shaped wedge shaped opacity, triangular wedge shaped opacity in the periphery. What is that radiological sign called Hampton's hump? Western mark sign, two signs of pulmonary embolism. Whenever pulmonary embolism is there, it leads to infarction, which is reflecting in the form of wedge shaped infarct in the periphery. That is called Hampton's hump. What is meant by Western mark sign? Normally, you are able to see pulmonary vessels like this. If there is a clot in the pulmonary artery, then that particular blood vessel will not be seen. What is that called? Focal oligemia. Focal oligemia is a feature of uh, pulmonary embolism. And that focal oligemia is basically called as, is basically called as Westermark sign. Hampton's hump. Mr. Mark, sign are the signs of. What do you see on ECG characteristically? Huh? Come on, Kadak, Kadak, Hunaveda, Re. Intaha, Nare, Nazdik, Meh, Huh? Up. By now, you must be ready. S1, Q3, T3. S means what? A negative wave after the positive wave, R wave. Q means a negative wave before the positive wave, R wave. So, lead 1, S wave, Q wave in lead 3, T wave inversion in lead 3 is called characteristic feature of pulmonary embolism. And how do you evaluate that? What is the investigation? CT pulmonary angiography is what you need to basically remember. 45 year old. Former by occupation complaints of a gradually enlarging painful mass and you had been given a abdomen imaging. What do you see? Multi loculated appearance, echinococcus granulosa, okay, is one which you suspect. Hydatidosis is uh, the answer. Now, doctor, 35 year old. From South India, complaints of episodic severe upper abdominal pain radiating to the back. There is also thirst, polyuria, bulky pale stools, means steatoria. And uh, blood sugar is 180. Fasting, that means he also developed diabetes. 
and you have done a abdominal imaging which is showing calcification along the course of pancreas. So what is this tropical chronic pancreatitis which is very common in Kerala etc etc. Tropical chronic pancreatitis is the one which is your diagnosis doctor. Then 25 year old from Sri Lanka presents with history of on and off central abdominal pain. Weight loss is also there. Projectile bilious vomiting is there and uh, he is dehydrated and uh, what do you get? Air fluid levels in the central part of abdomen. Air fluid levels in central part of abdomen means you remember our biology teacher diagram? Small intestine will be central and ascending iota, transverse iota, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. So central air fluid levels means small bowel obstruction. So small bowel obstruction, what is the common cause? Tuberculosis in the impoverished countries. That is what you need to basically remember. Then uh, uh, 19 year old, colicky abdominal pain, history of diarrhea alternating with constipation and the, on examination patient is pale and uh, the abdomen has slight fullness in the right iliac fossa. And there is a lump in the same area and a barium is being shown to you, follow through. That means barium from the uh, back, not, not barium meal, barium follow through. Then what is this basically? It is a hyperplastic ileocecal TB. And what is that sign you are seeing on the barium uh, image doctor here? It is called as Fleschner's sign. That is widely gapened, thickened, patulous ileocecal valve and a narrowed, ulcerated terminal ileum because of the ileocecal involvement is basically called as Fleschner sign, which is a sign of ileocecal TB, is what you have to basically remember. Now, doctor, um, a 10 month old girl is being brought with occasional vomiting. In fact, Without even looking at image directly, history only you can tell. She is crying and uh, there is an intermittent pain and she screams flexing her knees and elbows. And uh, uh, there is a uh, current jelly like a stool. And what do you see here? Claw, claw appearance because of into susception, one part of gut entering into other part of the gut is what you have to basically remember. Then a premature neonate has been born with severe respiratory compromise and is on ventilatory support. What do you see in this very characteristically? The gut in the abdomen has gone into the thorax, chest. See normally do you find uh, if the air containing gut in the thoracic area, you will not. Gut is supposed to be in the belly. When will it enter into thorax? If there is a diaphragmatic hernia. So, that lead to compression of the lung. Compression of the lung leading to the development of uh, respiratory distress is what you have to basically remember. Then, uh, all high yield topics, doctor, you must... Uh, Simple, Bailey and Love, uh, wherever you get characteristic images, radiological picture, you must have a idea that is what is going to be the challenge of the image based exams. Okay? 78 year old with a lump in the anal margin. Anal margin. Then you have done biopsy. Squamous cell carcinoma is there. What is the treatment of squamous cell carcinoma of the anal area? Chemo, radiotherapy. If you get the clue what examiner is looking for, it is easy to answer. Okay? So that is all the story of the image based questions.